there's a great use case for AI. I use it on some of my own sites, but it can be a challenge when people are paying $100, $200 for an article from a writer and that article is being produced by AI and they're not aware of that. And then the big problem comes up where if there is a risk that Google is going to hurt AI traffic, which I think there's some question on whether or not that's the case, but regardless, there is a risk and publishers want to make, allow publishers to be able to make that risk-based decision on do they publish AI content or not. Yeah, I think it's a huge topic right now. And like even like a boom in eBooks, especially with chat coming out, people just putting out content that in a lot of cases, it's just garbage content, to be honest with you. Not any real thought put behind it and just generating for the sake of it, which is, I think why Google's putting the hammer down on just bad content like they've always done. Like they just don't want a bunch of trash out there that's not useful for people. And so I'm wondering from like your point of view as a publisher, you've been around the space for a long time, a lot more than most that are just even just getting started with it. And I've seen a lot of conversation about what Jasper puts out better content. Sometimes it doesn't. Chat tends to get flagged more on the first round. Sometimes it doesn't. People tend to see mixed results with these AI content detectors. Can you break down a little bit about like like originality specifically and like maybe some of how it operates and like, how does it determine what's original and what's not? Cause I've definitely had content from Jasper without any edits. That's gotten 99 to near 100%. I've also got the same inputs output or maybe a little bit different, but like it was totally on the other end of the spectrum with Jasper. So can you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So most tools in the space are based off of learning GPT three and 3.5 output which then, you know, Jasper plugs into like many other tools. And then they have to do some of the extra stuff as do some other tools. But that's certainly the kind of the core starting point for a lot of these tools is the open AI API to be able to create the content. The way some AI detection tools work is this sort of linear probabilistic model. Like the way the NLPs work is they say, great, the next word, what's the highest probability next that the next word will be X? And then it plugs that word in. And then what's the highest probability that the next word will be Y? And then it plugs that word in. And what a lot of detection tools do is create this sort of giant linear probabilistic model of what's the probability that each of the next words matched what we thought OpenAI's NLP GPT 3.5 or 3 would have produced. And then that gives it a score. Originality does that, but then also looks at built our own AI to consume a boatload of, so it was like a hundred thousand inputs from GPT-3 and then had RAI trained on what does that look like? And so one of the frustrating questions that comes up is why is this AI and AIs that do stock picking or AIs that do, you know, any other sort of prediction thing. The honest answer is even GPT-3 and the honest answer is like, why did it do that? That's what the AI was trained to do. And then we test the accuracy on raw GPT-3 output. We're 94% accurate. That's about to bump up to 97 with the new update. And then the way that our scoring works is that we assign a probability. So this is also sometimes confused where if we hit 75%, we're saying we have a 75%, RAI is a 75% confidence that piece of content was AI generated. And so we definitely don't always get it right, but yeah, give, assign a probability from zero to a hundred in terms of our, the AI's confidence that it was AI generated or not. And so is the goal with generating these probabilities, obviously to get the answer right more often than not, but is it also to, I, I guess, cause some of Jasper's outputs, like they flag is like pretty much original. And like I said, like even chat GPT, yeah. whatever tool you're using, sometimes it gets a totally different like side is that kind of how all of the tools operate they're kind of like rolling i don't know if like rolling the dice is the best analogy but it, you're doing a lot of stuff to train it to be able to pick up these patterns and maybe like jasper depending on the quality of prompt and depending on the context that you're giving it and bringing into it it's not necessarily going to spin that out as something that ai would have written because you're bringing a level of like your own uniqueness to the table does that sound like i'm on the right page yeah, I think for sure. I think that's a question like as plugged into the same AI right now in the form of open AIs, but as more model as Bard comes online and as more models come online, will the rate of detection, at what point will AI be good enough that it will be undetectable? And I don't know that answer, right? GPT-2 detectors continue to be reasonably accurate on GPT-3 output. AI tools, as like right now, it's like they're all kind of start from a similar point of OpenAI's API. And then 
adds some extra features around it. And those extra features increase the chance of being able to trick a detection tool. I think mm. long-term depends on your use case as a publisher and, and as a writer, but I think if you're producing AI content, then worrying about AI detection scores don't make a ton of sense because we're not Google. Our detection score doesn't necessarily mean that's the same way that Google is going to view it. It's more important mm. to look at it from a human editor standpoint as did this, does this add value regardless of, and so again, on some of my sites, I'm using AI content, happy to be using it. We have a method for adding value. Um, I don't care what my AI detection score is on those as much. And yeah, I think thinking about it correctly that some AI tools, if they add extra features into their content creation, then it will more be more likely to bypass AI detection. And that sort of has led us into, and what will GPT-4 produce? Will that get us to the point of asking it to write in any format that you choose to, and it will produce that and it will be undetectable? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns in this space and it's perfectly, I think it's perfectly normal in this instance to, Hey, I really don't know anyone that's saying that they know and have the answer right now is probably like <laughs> got something weird going on in the background that might be a little sketch just because of how fast everything changes here. And so thinking like in terms of like people that are already creating content, whether it's chat GPT, Jasper, or any of the other tools, and they're coming in first and foremost, so you want to add value with your content in some way, shape or form, some websites, like you, you were mentioning, like add value maybe in other ways versus people coming and like expecting to hear from like their favorite blogger and they're like what who wrote this this doesn't even sound this was something that like a human wrote other places people are just looking for like a blurb click here buy this or do something there and it's not as as relevant are you concerned that google will slap those type of sites that you're running or is your strategy like a little like less reliant on Google stuff. I'm just kind of curious because it seems like even like all of these tools, you can test it in AI stuff and then Google can come out with something and say, oh no, we decided that's AI. But like all I did was the outline. Yeah. yeah. I think anytime there's a shortcut in SEO, it usually gets closed pretty quick. I think AI is a shortcut the same way, exact match domains, going back a number of years, exact domains, easy links, the way that other methods have previously existed to shortcut as producing good content. Um, they th usually gets closed. So I am afraid that Google will punish, will be forced to punish AI generated content and their approach will struggle to be able to differentiate between partially used AI and fully used AI and human generated content. I think any, anytime Google makes an update, there are incorrect losers. Like there are people that get punished likely not intentionally by Google and they sometimes have to roll it back. I think it's a pretty safe assumption that everyone wants to write with AI and no one really wants to read AI. I think there's exceptions to that with ethically used AI with extra value added. Google says that will skate by, but when they're faced with declining value of their search results, strong alternative Will they be forced to come out in a strong position against AI generate content? I think that answer is yes. And the other call it mental exercise I do on this is if I were to buy a site, let's say I buy a site that I care about, like about a price point that I significantly care about, and it has not historically used AI generated content on that site. Do I want to introduce that risk of AI generated content onto that site? I'm making the decision on some sites that no, this is a human generated only site. And I'm making the other decision on other sites where AI generated content makes sense on this site. I think it's in line with Google's guidelines and I'm happy to push out AI generated content on some sites and not on others. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be like, you just need to really pick which sites are going to be getting this type of content versus also at what level are you letting AI write the finished product for you here? As, yep. Again, as more people are tapping into the same source. A lot of the content is going to be very generalized and it's going to sound a lot of the same. And where we're heading in, in like our AI author community leading into a book challenge right now, it's obviously we don't want like a plagiarized book. We don't want a book that's just straight up written in like hundred percent AI content, but there's ways that we're using Jasper in this case to like really extend our writing abilities and using it to enhance our own voice and things of that nature. And yeah. I'm curious, like if you had like a tip or like, maybe like with originality or otherwise for like ways that you see people using this tool along the more like research paper approach, like something that's going to have a lot of human element in it. Like, where do you see this tool plugging in with those sorts of, not necessarily just AI heavy sites, but the academic, the author that's working in collaboration with these tools. 
Yeah. So I think what we've seen is, and I think it's, I think it's really answers your question, but some of the sort of most advanced approaches that we've seen is people saying, Hey, this is the portion of the article that is, needs to be added. The human value component being added of like opinion, whether it be a, a sort of like human opinion, the, all the sort of extra EAT sort of added in around, around a certain topic. But then there's all this FAQ stuff below, or there's general commentary around it where that can be AI generated, human reviewed, but then this is the sort of this, if it's a 1500 word article, this first 500 words, we want that to be human, human generated. And they're using originality AI to say, to take this nuanced approach of saying, layer in the expertise, authority, and trust into this section with the sort of personal anecdotes and the unique data and whatever it might be. And then all the stuff below, which we need to create that complete sort of topical authority on this topic for the article, use AI to assist you in creating that content. And then the sort of quality is there. It's been edited. So like the, the accuracy is there by the expert author and all the eat is there. So I think that's where we've seen people taking the most advanced, most nuanced approach to using AI detection and producing a piece of content efficiently that is the best for the given search term. You mentioned EAT. What is that acronym? Can you expand on that? So, so it's for, in Google, it's in for expertise, authority, and trust. And so okay. it's, it's um, how Google communicates what they want to see out of content. So Google has said, AI is not bad. Bad content is bad. We don't like crappy content. We're good at detecting crappy content. The opposite of crappy content is good quality content produced with a lot of e expertise, authority, and trust. And so they don't want me writing about a veterinarian product. They want a veterinarian to write about animals and provide comments. They don't want AI to say, here's the optimal diet for a dog with Lyme disease. They want a vet who is an expert on that topic to produce that piece of content. That makes perfect sense. I think that's a really great way to approach, especially us as authority figures or authors or more like business owners, thought leaders, right? And like taking that approach to any sort of content, like whether AI is a part of the equation or not, is going to help your content do better on Google and just be more useful to people that you're putting it out there for. All that said and done, like tools like you've got John and built, I think are really cool. I've been testing it out over the past couple of weeks and just like seeing where it flows and really handy, especially like on the plagiarism checker and just getting stuff just vetted really quickly. For those that are interested in checking out a little bit more, what can they find? Maybe connect with you, check out your tool and anything else, last words you want to leave people with. Yeah, no, sounds great. Yeah, people can check out originality.ai and then find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And those are probably the best, best spots to, to connect. And yeah, I'm no, happy to be a, be a tool in the tool belt of AI authors. And we're adding in additional functionality around the pages and detection. We're going to be adding in some other stuff around readability scores and just be that sort of like last place to have full awareness of the content that you're putting out into the world and where it sits on a plagiarism, AI, readability, and keep becoming the most complete tool for, especially for web publishers, looking to make sure that the content that they're publishing is, have, will have the best chance of success online. Love it. It's awesome, John. Thank you so much for your time, breaking down a little bit of originality.ai and what we're looking at with the world of AI content detectors. Fast-paced industry, of course, guys. Go check out John and uh, this tool. Make sure you're running your stuff through sound and human. Also, don't plagiarize, obviously. And uh, make sure you're using tools to check your work before you click publish. So, John, thanks so much again. We'll see you on the other side. Sounds good. Thanks, Derby.